This problem is from a really old book that I believe was originally published in the 1800s. I actually have the book here. The book is called Higher Algebra. That's by Hall and Knight. And I think the original publication date on this book, well, this is from 1960, but the original one, yeah, first edition, 1887. So super old book. My copy was printed in Great Britain and my copy's from 1960. This is a wildly popular book on higher algebra. It's got algebra in it, but it's a lot harder than like typical algebra. So this is a problem in the book and we're gonna work through it. It's pretty cool. So if A over B is equal to C over D is equal to E over F, etc., then we're told that each of these ratios is equal to this, where P, Q, R, N are any quantities, whatever. So, Let's go ahead and work through it, proof. So we're gonna start by giving this a name, right? Because these are all the ratios. So we have to show that all of these are equal to this expression here. So let's give this a name. So I'm gonna say set K equal to A over B, which is equal to C over D, which is equal to E over F, etc. right? That's the assumption. So we assume all of these are equal and let's give it a name. And now what you can do uh, is basically, I can write each of these numerators in terms of K. So for example, if I have K equals A over B, I can multiply um, by B. So then, then that tells us that A is equal to, whoops, A is equal to B over B times K, and then C is equal to D times K. And then E is equal to F times K, et cetera, right? So again, just multiply by B here. If you have K equals A over B, you multiply by B, so you get A equals BK. You have K equals C over D, you multiply by D, you have C equals DK. You have K equals E over F, multiply by F, you have that. All right, so now let's actually work this out. Let's work out what, what is this numerator here? What is this piece? P A to the N. So then P A to the N is gonna be P and it's gonna be B to the N, K to the N because you're raising it to the nth power. So it'll be B to the N, K to the N. And then Q C to the N, so Q c to the n, it's gonna be q, d to the n, k to the n. And then r, e to the n, is gonna be r, f to the n, k to the n. So f to the n, k to the n, etc. All right, so we've worked out uh, the numerator, at least what's visible here, right? Because this goes on, we don't know how far it goes. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to write this down. So then, so I'm gonna write the whole thing down just as it is first, without the one over n. So p a to the n plus q c to the n plus r e to the n over, and then we have p p to the n plus q d to the n plus r f to the n. By the way, this, the, the reason this proof is important is because you can do a lot of other problems using this technique. Um, so that's the, really the cool thing about it. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, about some applications of this once we're done. So now we can replace uh, what we worked on here. So this is equal to, so P A to the N is this. So it'll be P B to the N, K to the N. Q C to the N is this, so it's Q, D to the N, K to the N, and then R, E to the N is this. So that's R, F to the N, K to the N, etc. Then we still have the bottom piece, P, B to the N, plus Q, D to the N, plus R, F to the N. And look at this, you can pull out a K to the N in the numerator. So we have K to the N, we have P, B to the N, plus Q, D to the N plus R, F to the N. There's a lot of variables, right? So it's really easy to get mixed up. And this is P, B to the N 
plus q d to the n plus r f to the n. These cancel. So this is k to the n. So now we need to take uh, the nth root of this, right? Because if you raise this to the 1 over n power, we have to show it's equal to each of these ratios. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and write this down again. So thus, our original expression, which was this one, to the 1 over nth power. So I'll write it again. So it was p a to the n plus q c to the n plus r e to the n over, and then we have the bottom piece here, p b to the n plus q d to the n plus r f to the n to the 1 over n. That's equal to k to the n to the 1 over n, which is equal to k. But k is equal to all of the ratios. We said that at the beginning of the problem. So this is equal to a over b, which is equal to c over d, which is equal to e over f, et cetera. And that completes, that completes the proof. So let me just show you the book really quick because the book talks about why this is important. It gives you a specific case of what's happening here. So if you notice here, um, you have p a to the n, q c to the n, r e to the n, et cetera. So if you take, um, say you take all of these numbers to be one, right? And then if, if, if everything was one, if this is a 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 one, you would just get a, right? Because this is one, this is one. So you would just get a plus c plus e. So you would get a plus c plus e over, and then on the bottom you would get b plus d plus f, right? So basically, when these ratios are equal, the, the ratio of the sum of the numerators to the sum of the denominators is also equal. That's what this is saying, right? And the book talks about that. Let me show you. It says it. I'll just find it for you. It's pretty cool. I was just sitting here working and I thought, hey, I should just show you this proof. So it talks about it here. It says, uh, by giving different values to P, Q, and R in many particular cases of the general proposition may be deduced or they may be proved independently by using the same method, right? So the method of this proof will allow you to do other problems. For instance, if the ratios are the same, then each of the ratios is the, the sum of the numerators to the sum of the denominators, right? So it says it here. When a series of fractions are equal, each of them is equal to the sum of all the numerators divided by the sum of all the denominators. So kind of an interesting thing, right? So if you had, just as another concrete example, say you had, you know, it's, it's maybe simple algebra, but if you have A over B, equals c over d, then a plus c, this is equal to, you know, the ratio a over b. And this is also equal to the ratio c over d. So you have both of these things following from this. And it's pretty clear, right? I mean, it's pretty clear um, that that's the case. But yeah, it's just a nice way to, to prove um, these, you know, simple, simple facts. So... Yeah, kind of cool. I hope this video has been helpful. And again, the book uh, that this is from is Hall and Knight. It's called Higher Algebra, and it's a pretty cool book. I like it. Um, it's got all kinds of really challenging problems, and it's really inexpensive. I'll try to leave a link in the description. But yeah, good luck. Take care.